What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and we are here with week three of the Indigo League of Legends. The uh, Venus Venusaur, of course, coming off of a very, 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 very close loss last week. If you haven't seen that battle, definitely go check it out. It is in the playlist for the Indigo League of Legends. Um, in week three, we're going to look past that loss. We are going up against the uh, Tacoma Trevenants, coached by Kangas Cloud, so be sure to check out his link and his side of the battles in the description. Um, when I was preparing for this battle, I actually noticed that he had a pretty interesting team overall. Of course, his uber is Grin Ninja that he decided to draft. Um, but overall, his team was very weak to dark. Um, and that's why in this battle, I decided to bring both Drapion and Spiritomb. Because he didn't really have anything to soak up those dark type hits. And furthermore, if I kept Drapion and Spiritomb alive, I could set up Toxic Spikes, keep them on the field by switching in uh, Spiritomb to any spins from Hitmon on top. And just basically force him into switching around and getting a lot of his teammates poisoned. Uh, furthermore, my ability to have Blaziken set up and then kind of sweep through his team as a Mega Blaziken was something that I wanted to do in the end game. So I went into this again. Toxic spikes. First thing here. First priority. So I decided to lead with Drapion. With the I decided to use Kurokai, my defensive Drapion, figuring that he would lead with either Jirachi or Greninja. Neither of which wants to really take on Drapion. Uh, he does reveal that he has physical moves on his Greninja, and I did watch one of his previous battles where he actually ran Power Up Punch Greninja. So, uh, figuring that he's just going to U-turn or maybe go for Skull to get a burn, I just went straight for Toxic Spikes. Uh, hit him on top does come out, he probably did expect me to set up Toxic Spikes, but he can't really do much about it. Uh, he can't spin, and even if he goes for a coverage move like Earthquake, this Spirit Tomb Malefolence that I bred right before the battle is running the very, very annoying Calm Mind Rest Dark Pulse uh, will was set. So either his Hitmon on top is going to get burned or it's going to get poisoned. Something's going to happen to it and I have different Pokemon to switch into his Pokemon depending on what he's trying to do. So the will was was really obvious, but I did want to force him into switching. I could have just gone for Dark Pulse, but if he had Foresight, I didn't really want to allow him to use that for free, because on Top can spin against Ghost Ties by using Foresight. Uh, you can also hit Spiritomb with a super effective fighting type move if he uses Foresight. So that was a very present threat in my mind. Um, I didn't really want Spiritomb burn, even though I have Rest. I didn't want to be forced into going for Rest that early. I decided to go on to this wonderful Latios that I caught in my own version, uh, Fortune of Latios. This took quite a few soft resets, so I'm very, very happy about his IVs and his nature. I just wanted to go straight for Draco Meteor. I knew he would probably go on to Jirachi, but Jirachi is such that I just want to put as much damage on it as I could. Uh, and seeing the damage from the Draco Meteor, I figured that he was actually probably running a little bit more bulky of a spread, and the Leftovers confirms that. This is good because I really didn't want to deal with a Scarfed Jirachi. Granted, I do have a Scarfed Latios in this battle, but Scarfed Jirachi not only has the ability to disrupt my defensive Pokemon by going for Trick, it also can be pretty annoying with Scarf uh, Iron Head flinches, so didn't want to deal with any of that if I didn't have to. He just goes straight for Wish. I figured that he would switch out, so I went into Kurokai just to do a good amount of damage with Pursuit. Uh, that's the only downside of running a defensive Drapion. He has decent attack even without investment, but if I were running an offensive Drapion, I would have KO'd Jirachi right here. And this just that's why Dra uh, Drapion is just one of my favorite Pokemon overall. His typing only gives him one weakness to ground, which is very easy to play around. And you can pursue trap things or knock them off if they stay in expecting the pursuit. So, uh, he does go back into Hitmon top, which is great. This thing is poisoned. Um, I can set up my other layer of toxic spikes if I want to. Or what I don't want is for me to set them up and for him to immediately spin them away. So instead, instead of taking that risk, I go directly out into Spirit Tomb just to block a potential spin. Again, kind of a predictable play but I'm not really too worried about it being a predictable play just because I want to get as many things poisoned as I can. Now in my particular draft, I don't have anything that can set up stealth rocks or entry hazards very uh, easily. I had My plan in the draft wasn't really to have entry hazards. It was either to bounce back my opponent's entry hazards or just to keep them off the field completely, kind of neutralize entry hazards as a whole. Uh, as he Volt switches out from his uh, Rotom, he actually goes into Jirachi probably expecting me to go for a Will-O-Wisp once again, or maybe expecting me to switch. 
which is a little bit more likely actually. I almost KO Jirachi with zero special attack investment, which shows that it's definitely more physically defensive. Uh, I decided to take this opportunity to go out into Espeon. I was expecting him to go for either Moonblast or his Stealth Rocks at that time. And he decides to go for Moonblast. Seeing the damage from that, okay, I can definitely handle that. We have Trelawney the Espeon here, which is really just set up, designed to set up the screens and then kind of just baton pass around to wherever I need to go. I decided to go for Reflect because he did have Kecleon, Mamoswine, and we've seen that the Greninja uses physical moves. And since Jirachi is more bulky, I'm not very worried about it at the moment. Uh, I decided just to go for Psychic here to see if he'd switch out into something. Um, I would have liked to bait him out into the Greninja because right now his Jirachi is gaining back health and I can't really touch it with my Espeon. Uh, he gets a special defense drop which offsets my screens a little bit uh, and then he gets all the HP back from the Wish so I'm kind of just sitting in here letting Jirachi steal all the momentum that I've built up. So we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I was hoping that he would either go for Wish or uh, maybe even U-Turn. I was hoping that he wouldn't go for Moonblast as I go out into my Blaziken, which is actually a Mega Blaziken this week. Um, I knew this would not only give me the free speed boost in case he randomly had something like a Scarf Mamoswine, which I was predicting him to use if he used Mamoswine, mainly because Mamoswine gets such fantastic coverage against my team. Uh, but with the plus one, after Mega Evolving, I will be able to outspeed but I really need to go ahead and Mega Evolve. Him on top is gonna be annoying here because he ha has Intimidate, he lowers my attack. I didn't really want to risk necessarily going for High Jump Kick. This week I was running High Jump Kick. Um, and High Jump Kick, Knock Off, and Flare Blitz alongside Swords Dance. So if I can get up a free Swords Dance, then we can really put some huge holes in his team. He does get a good Wish Pass off the hit him on top. But him on top without the Assault Vest makes it much more manageable for my team. Uh, in particular, Espeon can now do a pretty good amount of damage to it with Psychic if it comes down to it. Now I don't really have any reason to not go back into Malevolence. Here Spiritomb is just a full stop to hit him on top. And if he decides to bring in Rotom, since it looks like Rotom doesn't really have anything to really hit my Spiritomb with besides maybe Will-O-Wisp or Overheat, I can basically set up Calm Minds. Uh, he does decide to go ahead and burn Spirit Tomb, and at this point I have not revealed that I am the Calm Mind Rest Set, so it's time to start Calm Minding up, and then I can rest to get rid of the burn, and then hopefully we can start punching some holes in his team. With plus one special attack, I can comfortably two it KO, Rotom if, if it's not bulky, I can finish off the Jirachi from the level of HP it's at, I can live an Earthquake and do about half to uh, the Mamoswine, so overall, there are quite a few options I can have from plus one special attack. Uh, he does wool switch out immediately now that he sees that I'm trying to set up. He goes into the spirit tune, which I thought was an interesting play, probably just expecting the dark type move, which I didn't really mind. Uh, without the assault vest, he's not going to take these hits nearly as well. That's just a plus one dark pulse without any special attack investment. And after the poison damage, he can't stay in here. And that's why I really like the combination of spirit tune and Drapion up against my opponent this week. Um, his only real answer to both of them was just to overwhelm them with kind of coverage moves. He could use his one fairy type coverage move on Jirachi, uh, but outside of just overwhelming with offensive pressure, his team really kind of struggled to break through Spirit Tomb. And I'm finally going to reveal Rest right here because now is a great time to do it. Number one, I know my Reflect is going to wear off, which would just roll off at the end of that turn. Number two, he's going to try to switch out to take advantage of me being asleep. And number three, I know with my defensive investment, I can take two Earthquakes from Mamoswine and either rest up again or uh, at the very least hit him back with a Dark Pulse or I don't know. I can I have several options that I can go from here. Now he does go for a knockoff, which surprised me. I thought he would just go for Earthquake or Icicle Crash trying to flinch me. Uh, but since he went for knockoff, seeing the damage, I was like, is, I think he actually is Scarf. And he confirms it by switching out here. Because um, if he's going to stay in there with knockoff, then I definitely am just going to hang out here. Now, it does suck to lose my leftovers. Uh, I don't have that residual recovery every single turn. But that's okay, because I do have rest. I just have to be really smart about when I do use rest. 
he did knock off the leftovers and he switched out. So that means when he comes back in next time, he is going to definitely use uh, Earthquake or Icicle Crash, whichever. Now, I needed to see how much damage I took from the Hitmontop's Earthquake. And I went ahead and went for one more Calm Mine. I really should have just... Um, I maybe should have rested right there. It's hard to say. Because Hitmontop, I was thinking, was going to die to Poison. So I didn't want to waste the turn attacking. I felt like attacking would have been a waste of a turn. Because he was going to be KO'd by the Poison at the end of the turn anyway. He was KO'd by Poison. So that worked out. Now the question is... Will I die to an Earthquake at that level of HP? If you are wondering at home, the answer to that question is no. I will live it at 7 HP and be able to rest fully back up. And now my opponent is locked into Earthquake, which means I have the, the utility of switching out into Latios if I want to. Um, I can um, maybe switch back in to my Espeon and set up another Reflect. I have a couple of different ways I can go here. And I have a Spirit Tomb back at full HP. Now, since I know he is Scarfed, I'm definitely going to go out into Latios just because it's a lot easier to play from here. If he switches into Jirachi, then I can kind of comfortably 2 hit KO it with either Surf, if it's uh, since it does seem to be more physically defensive. But what we're going to do here is try to predict that switch out. And as he switches out, I'm going to go into Pop-Tar here trying to put some good offensive pressure on him. I haven't utilized Heliolisk in this battle yet, just because... It wasn't really in my best interest to do so. He kind of had a few switches to several of my moves. Um, but now I can just go for Thunderbolt to hopefully comfortably 2 it KO Jirachi. Uh, and after seeing that damage from the critical hit, I definitely can do it. I don't think that the critical hit mattered because two uh, Life Orb Thunderbolts would have been enough to KO Jirachi anyway. Um, I guess the crit mattered in the sense that now I can just go for a Hyper Voice instead of going, on, going for Thunderbolt. And he might have switched Mammoth Swine into the Thunderbolt. So, I don't think that the crit mattered too much overall, but it did force him to either stay in um, or take a lot of extra damage on Mammal Swine, which he definitely didn't want to do. But now he gets to bring in Mammal Swine for free. Uh, you'll notice that I haven't really hit Mammal Swine too much of my own volition. Its HP has been whittled down by just poison. So, dropping on setting up Toxic Spikes in the beginning of the match has been instrumental in not only wearing down Hitmontop, but wearing down Mammal Swine too. He decides to lock himself into Icicle Crash. Definitely a smart move. He did not want to use Earthquake when I have Latio sitting around. But since Icicle Crash is weaker, it's much more easy for uh, Spirit Tomb to switch into these moves. Now, with that being said, I just wanted to burn a turn to sleep there, force him to lock into Icicle Crash, and now I can switch into my Blaziken, which granted, Blaziken can't really take hits. It can take a resisted hit okay, but even that almost does half of his HP. That did around 35-40%. That was a resisted hit. Uh, if he's going to keep on using Icicle Crash, I just have to hope that I don't get flinched, basically. Uh, and that does limit my use of Flare Bullets, unfortunately, because I can't really take recoil damage. Um, I just decided to go for High Jump Kick right here. I was hoping that he would actually switch out into, I don't know, something. Maybe expecting another knockoff. But that's okay. I will definitely take the speed boost. And now he's going to go back out into his Rotom Heat. If I had gone for Swords Dance, I had a chance to KO Rotom Heat with a high jump kick at plus two. But there's no reason to really rely on that when I can just switch on in a Drapion, who is especially defensive with a little bit of defensive investment. Uh, I knew he wouldn't go for Will-O-Wisp right there because I could just stay in and high jump kick him. So switching out to Drapion was relatively safe for the most part. Uh, Kecleon comes in finally and gets poisoned. Kecleon is a type of Pokemon that can do so many different rolls that you really have to play carefully around it. I was afraid that he was running um, a power-up punch set, maybe with a salt vest or something. I went for a knockoff and I get rid of his citrus berry, which I found to be... I did not expect him to have citrus berry. Definitely did not. And even more so, I didn't expect him to use Trick Room. Uh, with Trick Room and the Pokemon that he has left, um, I just, I don't know. I At this point, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be okay because I don't think he can hurt Drapion. I was trying to go through Kecleon's massive moveset in my head. Um, and the best thing he has to hit me with at this time is Drain Punch. He might have had a normal type move, uh, but there's no real point in doing that necessarily just because Kecleon gets Protean so it can switch to whatever type moves it wants to. I did think that he went for a little bit of a risk there switching to Psychic type. If for some reason he were faster than me and then I went for a dark type move, then I would have had a super effective hit off on him. But that doesn't matter. I am going to take this time to switch out into my Spirit Tomb because he's probably going to just go for Drain Punch again because he wants that HP back. 
And if I switch out like this, he will not get the HP back and then he will die to poison just like uh, Hitmontop did. So once again, the Drapion Hitmontop combo working out very, very nicely. And he's gonna go back out into his Rotom Heat. I'm able to burn a turn to sleep here just because I need to wake up just in case here. And um, he goes for Overheat, which does way more damage than I thought it would. Because he obviously was on Scarf for Spec, so I didn't think he had full investment. But I'm just most likely underpowering, underestimating the power of Overheat. Underheat. Overheat, over easy. Either way. Um, I go out into Espeon there. I actually probably could have lived that hit because I'm max HP with a little bit of bulk and special defense. But he does get the crit to knock out my Espeon. Uh, you'll have to excuse me for my, my vocal cords squeaking. I sound like there's a kitty in the background. And really, I'm just wheezy because I am not at 100% health. But I hope you, if nothing else, find my wheeziness entertaining. Now, he does go out into Greninja. The Twisted Dimensions return back to normal, which was the only reason that he was able to outspeed me earlier in the first place. Uh, I don't have any reason to just not drop a Draco Meteor here, even if he is faster normally. Here's where he finds out that I have a Scarf on my Latios. So that means he's left with just Rotom Heat, and with several things to switch into it, he really doesn't want to use Overheat because he'll drop his special attack and he can't switch out to reset it. Uh, I can just switch out from Latios and then come back in and use Draco Meteor again. So we're going to switch out, go into Drapion, um, he goes for Volt Switch, which means he doesn't have Thunderbolt. His last move was actually Dark Pulse, which I think he wanted to have that be Pain Split, I think is what he said. I wish that would have been interesting. Here he could have definitely played some shenanigans with Pain Split later on in the match as I'm trying to whittle it down. Uh, he does take that knockoff really, really well for me not having any offensive investment at all. And he burns Drapion, which sucks. I definitely wanted to have Drapion alive at the end of this battle. It was kind of my own personal moral victory because it's like, yeah, go Drapion and stuff like that. Um, I decided just to stay in here and go for Poison Jab, hoping for the Poison Hacks, um, which was a little bit unnecessarily risky, especially if you're looking at Differential. I could have just switched down to the Latios easily. But I do live the burn barely after Leftovers Recovery, so that's nice. Now I get to go out in the Latios. Uh, if he wants to go for Volt Switch or Overheat, it's not going to do that much damage because I resist both, fortunately. I didn't do that on purpose, fortunately, with the fortune one. Anyways, we're going to go for a Draco Meteor and seal off the battle. So that's going to be, I think that's a 5-0 a victory. I really wanted to come back strong. I had a really bad loss in the Pokemon Premier League right before I had this match. It's kind of like I, I kind of flip-flop between things. Either have a really close victory or a really bad loss where I just get swept up. So it's nice to have... A, a fantastic match with a really really strong opponent where I feel like I played pretty well and planned properly for the battle. So if you guys enjoyed this just let me know in the comments and look forward to week four of the Indigo League of Legends where we go up against the San Francisco Swamperts which is one of my biggest rivals on my channel Connor. Uh, definitely looking forward to that matchup. Have a great week guys. I'll talk to you later.